Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining Archangel Alts. This is Gordon Freeman, the free man, leading you from the darkness into the light through cryptocurrency trading. Mass adoption for cryptocurrency comes from liquidity. Liquidity comes from trading on a legitimate exchange. So let us do so. So I'm here because we're looking at, man, this has been a tough one to track. It's been very exciting. Uh, Raven, which we have been watching for a while, been just, you know, it feels good to be right about some of these guys. Um, just as we're tracking. So two of the top things right now, while we were looking to clear Raven coin and Phoenix positions, um, Raven and Phoenix coin rose to the top <laughs> uh, while we were working on that process. And um, in the process of uh, having cleared, bought and sold, bought and sold IOST several times, now IOST has risen to the top. And so, you know, once things are up there, it's very difficult to get back in. Uh, but we're tracking all this stuff. So ONT, we've been watching. Uh, we cleared our 3300s. And uh, in fact, it, right as I said that, that's exactly the amount that it sold at um, probably a week ago. And it looks to me like it may be climbing again to the 3600 range. So we have 36 and 39. Uh, that we're looking looking to clear. This goes back to, if I remember correctly, September. Um, so you can see, guys, the signs of the foothills of a of a bull run are starting to come into play. And pardon me. Um, so if we look at slightly longer point, you can see all of that massive activity is all the stuff down here. So we are looking back here, and sure enough, right in that uh, August into September range, uh, some of our higher positions go back to there. Very few huddles, uh, whenever they do uh, happen, uh, kind of goes back to uh, you know either very early off when things were still doing their 50% uh, down. There has been three main downs: 60% down, 50% down, 60% down, 60% down. So. Right here, 1078 to 1088 is basically what we're looking at uh, for Raven. Um, the tricky part is that as it gets into narrower and narrower ranges, it's more and more tricky, more and more risky. Um, looking to uh, try to, because of the pickup, I think that this is one of those times where um, you wait a little bit longer for the right position, and then you want to come in uh, very carefully because uh, this could continue another one of these drops over here. You know, everything is possible. And it's way up high. Let me show you just how high the high is. You know, so this is kind of like trying to decide whether it's going to come down off of the cliff up there. You know, Raven has gone from 592 to 1200. It has more than doubled. So it has a long way that it can continue to rise, and it has a long way that it can drop. Which do we think it's going to do? Well, I'm looking at one of those things that is a little bit of a risky move. Um, and the 8,500 uh, BTC 24-hour volume is a huge, enormous amount. <laughs> Ethereum is sitting here at 7,300, and that's been actually uh, pretty high for Ethereum for a while. It has had a couple of 9,000 BTC 24-hour volume days. Um, not all the time, though. So what I'm looking for is that quick pop from 1075 to 1085-ish somewhere in that range. It bottomed out at 1064 and then bounced again. It has been really difficult to track. But I tell you what, um, I've called it a wrong a couple of times, but I'd much rather be wrong while I'm not going in on a position. And then uh, that allows you to choose the right time to go in. <laughs> so, you know, it's, you're, it's not really calling something wrong. It's just that you're watching for the right opportunity and you have to wait for it. And so you test and test and retest. Um, so it's kind of my jokingly uh, looking at when the right entry point is. And you can see that, I mean, there is a, a decrease in volume. You can see that there's a decrease in a few of these other things. Um, so is it going to come down to the perfect position or not? Um, I'm also looking that people are shallowing out on where they're putting stuff. Okay, look at that. Yeah, I wasn't even looking for the five Bitcoin right there. Um, I noticed that they were using six Bitcoin to weigh it down earlier, kind of doing the same thing. And sure enough, it did exactly what we thought it was going to do. So uh, it's just, I will always play these overly cautious. That's why we have been able to hold on to our money while we're moving up the exponential growth curve. By the way, speaking of which, the EGC, oh, my friends, uh, fellow Binanceans, 
um, fellow traders. We had a really fun webinar Tuesday evening, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on March 21st. And it uh, went very well. And uh, we're going to uh, share segments of that with you as we go along. Um, so I'm looking at this. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see what I'm talking about. It has a little bit of this rainbow-shaped arch, just a little bit of a slope. Um, usually when you see a spike uh, towards the top or you know a sharper point there, um, it tends to stand for stronger activity. So I'm watching to see just how low is it going to drop because whenever it hits a certain point, uh, we're just looking for that you know 10 points up. Um, something that I mentioned the other day is, um, you know, so when coins are in that uh, 700, 800, 900 range, and what I'm talking about is the very last um, units here, uh, we have eight spaces behind the decimal. Uh, so like a 700, 800, 900 has a lot more trouble moving than when it reaches beyond that and becomes a thousand. Uh, some of that is technical. Some of it is just psychological. Uh, 1000 looks like a smaller thing to overcome than 970 something or 980 something. Uh, and so people tend to not trade as heavy against those. It's just a funny little thing that us humans do with numbers. So 1063 I'm looking at. And um, really am looking to, uh, you know, sometimes moving up the exponential growth means adjusting some of your variables as we work our rule of fifths and principle of thirds um, i would never advise somebody that's just starting out especially to just jump right in with you know their whole um, bag so to speak um, you know don't put your entire investment on one position because then you don't get an opportunity to trade but as we're getting to that point where we are crossing the threshold of what i would call reaching equilibrium it's a very complex concept and it, uh, we don't use the same exact systems as other people do. I think that you have to customize towards what you do well. And in this case, what we do well is to break things down, uh, look for the risk, look for the positions, um, always erring towards a little bit more of a cautious uh, angle because I've seen the market change so quickly. And you know, one of the things that you learn from your mistakes uh, early on, you learn to correct towards the things that you missed or you continue to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. So uh, we learn very quickly because it's money and we care about not messing that up. <laughs> so um, we also, you know, we have been very uh, conservative and cautious uh, throughout this, but you have to be willing to have the courage to move in when it is the right time. So, you know, this is starting to, you know, okay, it could absolutely continue to test the bottom of the Bollinger Bands here. Uh, what I see is that it's staying beneath the volume. Uh, this is the volume and the price. So it's coming down with the price, but I am watching uh, our 24 hour 8528. Okay, it was higher than that just even moments ago. Um, 8,000 BTC 24 hour volume for a coin like Raven is huge ginormous gargantuan and also big okay so we've already hit 1068 to so technically 1068 to 1078 would do it uh, so we have to uh, be willing to go in somewhere i'm going to wait until i see an actual confirmation that the angle of the macd is actually changing so i'm you know i'm continuing to test here towards the low side um, but this is one of those times where if I can find the right entry point, I want to get in and out very quickly. And in doing so, I'm willing to use a larger trade size than I would normally do. Okay. You know, it's, it's, oh, it's so difficult to um, plan for exactly the right move here. Um, I just, I think that it is worth the risk if we can get in at exactly the right price. Here's that 5 BTC. In fact, you know, I'd rather not go in at all than to guess it wrong. Um, so 1068, I think 1068. Now so many times right here in this position, um, I've seen it correct downwards. Um, so my hope is that 1078 is still a low threshold to clear if it doesn't do exactly what I think that it should do. So as I'm watching what it's doing at 1071, I'm ready 
to cancel my 1068 if I think that it's consolidating down by 1064, which it could be. So that's part of what I'm watching here. Okay, we're so close there. Look at that. 1069 to 1073. Okay. So it actually broke down some of that 5 BTC and went back up. I think that it might have what it takes to cross through there. Let's see. All right, so 1069. Okay, it's eating that up. 1068. Now some other people are in at 1068. You know, I, I would much rather be cautious because you can see this could be doing another down slope. Very easily could. It's very possible. It's not unusual to see this go slightly lower. So yeah, we have da 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 the sharp, sharp climb, less sharp, came down to about the top of the third there, our principle of thirds, weakening through here, weakening, did exactly what we would expect. But see, even the weakening here is shallowing as it goes down. I think that we're still waiting to see where that proper reversal is. So see, when I was talking about it, it's like, you know, if I'm going to be wrong, I want to be wrong without having lost anything on it. <laughs> So, you know, it, it still may be exactly the right decision to go in at, 10, at 1068 and hope that it comes up to even around here or so. Uh, there's no guarantee that it does. You know, remember how we looked at where it is? It's right up there on the cliff. But, you know, even at four hours, we can see that it's kind of deciding uh, whether to ride this VWAP line up again. 1072. 1069. It was at uh, 1069, 1073, 1069 to 72. So it's kind of boxed in and it's either already consolidated what we saw um, in the uh, five Bitcoin stuff or they've closed some of that out uh, to wait kind of like what we're doing. Wait to see what happens next. So there's just kind of an interesting move uh, to watch during Raven's move here. Uh, ONT, I decided not to try to chase it up to 3100 for exactly the same reason. It's sitting so high up there. It's been uh, six months uh, since it's reaching the same positions as where it is now. And in the past, when it's reached there, it has been able to go clear past 4000. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. But since we're already in there, um, just, I'm just kind of waiting uh, to watch for something a little bit safer to happen. 85.17. So we are losing volume, and that is the risky part of this. So I'm just using this as a, an enjoyable instruction tool. We'll see what it does. I may not decide to go in on this. I may... 67 to 77. Oh, yes. Okay. Let's see. Okay, it's already doing a little bit of a bounce there. 69, they're kind of piling up on 69 again. I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to pile up down here around 1064. So we'll see what happens, whether this is actually going to drag down there or whether it's coming up here. See, this creates enough volume. Oh, okay, well, it's either... I don't know if that's new ones that people put in or what that is. Let's see. Um, you know, when it kind of boxes this in, it does actually kind of create the ability for it to uh, rectify both of those positions. So 70 to 80 may not be a bad idea. 70 to 80 is just that I don't want to lead in the climb above the VWAP line until I see that it can get beyond these uh, multiple Bitcoiners here. It's one of the things that's so amazing about Raven is it's been doing this with relatively few positions, more than half a Bitcoin uh, the entire time. So, and our, where our growth is on the exponential growth curve, technically our positions should probably be somewhere around the 0.6 range. So this would count for more than that if I decide to do it. Um, don't know if it, okay, 85.16 is still losing a little bit of momentum. Uh, stock RSI is getting up in that 80, uh, maybe even higher yet. 90 range is topping out towards the top. 
probably will continue to shy away from going in on that. Uh, 69 to 79 is very likely that it'll do that, but you know, even other people that are watching this, like right now, they have it at 0 0.4 and 0 0.3, uh, four bitcoins and three bitcoins um, towards 1065 and 1078. So if somebody is looking to get a one percent and their fees on top of that and a tiny bit extra. Um, it has done so much before this, and we just we've been watching for finding the right entry place. You know, I was actually concerned here that it was going to go into this over here. Um, it did do it over here. We tried to look into trying to get in there. It was too narrow. Um, was concerned that this meant that it was leveling out, and it did. So when you see that VWAP line going down with the value, you know that it's going to take a while for it to correct. So using these as teachable moments. So now it's kind of getting interesting again because um, it's a little bit of a consolidating thing. We see the, the Bollinger Bands starting to uh, move in a little bit. So let's see. Let's just see what it does here. Yeah, it's going to continue to correct downwards a little bit. So as those Bollinger Bands come tighter, uh, that middle line uh, tends to be the average that it's going to work towards. Um, you kind of get this convergence when we add the VWAP on top of the Bollinger Bands. So you'll see that when the volume and the price and the average of all those things start coming together, there's this tightening point and it just gets narrower and narrower and narrower. And then there's always some kind of breakout you know it doesn't have to be some massive thing uh, but you'll notice that it does level off at a certain point in there and then it's either going to go you know shooting up or down a little bit uh, at that point right now you see how it's just kind of staying boxed in within that range that we're talking about there's a very good chance that it okay they, so they dropped the four okay there's the four bitcoin at 65 but there is no larger position up there so it is very likely to go down to that now yeah yep yep okay so four and 65 we're just underneath that uh, in fact it's safer at 1062 so i'm going to see what that does 1062 would technically be lower than the last time it dropped here, but look at what happened when it got there. So tricky. But also um, the bands, you know, like this time, they never got narrow enough for there to be a breakout. It lost momentum here. Um, this to me looks like it's about to go up. No reason to think that that's the case because we got this rainbow right here. It's been weakening through here. We're seeing it's about to finish a down cycle here. Um, it's got probably 10, 15 minutes uh, before it's in the right up cycle again. So it probably went in on some there, did we? Yes, 1062. So we want to immediately go, I'm going to say, to sell 1071. Say 1062. Well, we'll say... 1070, 71, 72, 73, 74, and 75. Okay, so we have those set up. <laughs> yes, I hear the down there. So now that we're in on that, I'm going to look at uh, 10. Um, just kind of come upwards from there. I don't think that it's going to stay down there the entirety of that time. Bitcoin is starting to have an up, which may have an up there as well. So we'll say 33. See, I'm always correcting to what the market is saying that's going on. So that's kind of the idea. 10, 55, as close as 10, 55. Yeah, so I mean, these are going to end up working the way that we think that they are. 58, okay. And then the question becomes whether to go in with the browser as well. 
So I don't want to make this mistake of trying to watch one thing while not watching the other. And I also don't want to uh, miss an opportunity to make sure that they go through. So 1066 to 1076. We shall see. Let's see. We'll go to... Should already have the right position there. Okay, good. So now we're looking at like 10, 33, 10, 44, 10, 55. And then I'm coming in closer, watching to see what it seems like it's doing. What you feel like doing there, buddy? All right, so we are watching very intensely for that upturn to happen. It's so tough because you want to try to see whether you can get in in a low position, but you also have to be very cautious about upsetting the balance in the positions that you already have in. So what I'd like to do is to have like you know um, a full BTC from uh, both of these going in, uh, but. I think that that's a little bit too risky because the volume is, um, it's only now coming back up with us. You know, we're kind of in with those other traders that are helping things to move in this direction. So very cautiously. Yeah, I don't want to set upset those positions. See that crossover point right there. It's starting to come up now. And oftentimes I don't mind going in on the up if I see the momentum pick up uh, so much about this that you'll learn um, what we work with is kind of moving at the pace of things. And um, you know, a lot of people that like doing this very, very, very short term, uh, they'll even call it scalping. You know, I'll definitely look at it as day trading. Um, I like the adrenaline rush of that aspect of it. I tend to work really well when the pace accelerates, uh, but I definitely don't do it for the adrenaline. Um, I, I wish that I saw exactly the same patterns in like two and three day stuff as easily as I do in the super fast pace stuff. So when the market um, starts accelerating more and more uh, and we see more of this kind of stuff, um, just, you know, huge amounts of uh, volume ramping up, um, I will be even more and more and more in my element. Um, but 
I would be lying if I didn't say that um, I do believe in emotional trading, just being in control of those emotions. So here's exactly what we are thinking that it should be doing. Hopefully it'll continue this process. And just got that little bit of a window to go. Keep on going. We believe in you. Go for it. Yes. Certainement. Yes. All right. Just curious. There we go. And there we go. Fantastic. All right. So I'll just go ahead and clear those out. So as you can see, here we are. We um, It's been since the third that we sold our Raven in this account. Uh, so we bought at 1062 and sold at 1070, 71, 72, 3, 4, and 5. And it broke those up nicely. And so now I will go ahead and clear those out over here in the browser as well. Uh, we decided that it was better not to upset the, um, the fragility of those positions by trying to go in with more. Um, in that case, there's a very good chance that we would have dragged it down to the 58 range, the 1058. And if we had done that, it would not have been helpful. Um, got to do the right thing. Got to celebrate. Woohoo! Yippee! And, uh... <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm glad that you joined us with this. Um, decided to go ahead and shoot this video because I had a feeling that we were going to finally go in on another position. Uh, we did. Uh, we earned well. So it ended up working nicely for us. Thank you very much for joining us. Gordon Freeman, leader into freedom. Mass adoption equals liquidity. Liquidity comes from trading on a legitimate exchange. Uh, liquidity means that you're adding value to the marketplace. It's much better than hodling. Uh, if you want to show your appreciation or your support for a coin, you know, yes, you can collect it for investing, uh, but you should also show that it has transactional value going back and forth. That is what we're doing. We do not believe in shorting or um, betting against uh, something going up, you know, shorting. You know, you'll you'll find that people talk about two different categories of things. Um, they'll say, you know, uh, is this a short position or a long position? Um, that should be talking about the period of time, meaning do you expect it to clear within a day or two? Or is it something that you expect to take a week, maybe even months, um, where it goes into kind of more investing instead of trading? Um, and then there is actually talking about going long, uh, meaning that you're waiting for it to go up a good bit versus going short uh, doing or shorting a position, uh, meaning that you're looking for things to go down in value. Well, I don't think that it's really smart to show your support for Bitcoin by saying that you think that you're going to uh, put your money on uh, it going down. Just don't think that that is the way to go. I think that the market needs support, the market needs leadership, and we're here to try to help uh, fill in that gap. So um, I'm going to make sure that the link for the webinar stays. Um, you will always want to uh, join us through there, do a sign up. Uh, we'll make sure that that information is available. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Uh, if you're seeing this on YouTube, please subscribe, ring the bell, comment. Uh, come join our community. Seriously, do it. Um, it's fun to be able to interact with people that are benefiting from what we're trying to do. We will teach you about the rule of fifths, the principle of thirds, the rate of circulation, and the amazing, the incredible exponential growth curve. So thank you guys so much. Uh, on Twitter, please join us. We're really enjoying getting to know people on Twitter. Gosh, it looks like it's about to go up again too, doesn't it? Yes, it is going to go up again. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're using our own hashtag there, uh, among other things. Uh, hashtag mass adoption seems to be very specific to crypto on Twitter, so that's helpful. But we have our own hashtag crypto louder megaphone. Uh, we need a loud, louder megaphone. We need a bigger megaphone. And that is you. Come join our community. It is your voice that is missing. Um, not just for the training, uh, camaraderie, being on this journey together so that we can uh, experience that growth and wealth. Uh, we are not chasing after a dream. We are working hard. We are determined this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is a build your long term wealth quicker. 
<laughs> so, you know, if you are looking to do this process by long-term uh, investing um, through your uh, banking institution or your brokerage, uh, they would tell you to let it sit for 15 to 30 years while they try to do this kind of thing that you see in front of us with robots. And what we're saying is let's try to get to that same point or better or double than better uh, within, you know, let's say two years or so. Uh, crypto market is going to change and expand. Uh, we hope that uh, things like Binance are able to continue to grow along with it. Uh, it is the perfect solution for the market the way that it is right now. So thank you for joining us. Be with us on this journey together. God bless you. And for now, Archangel Alts out.